Hello and welcome to Attention Central Texas. I'm your host, Charles Jenkins, and today we have another exciting show in store for you. We have Ms. Karen Frederick, who's the CEO and founder of Hope Unbridled Ministry, as well as Ms. Ann Hartfield, who's an EGALA certified heart specialist. Hello and welcome to today's show. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Hartfield, let's just start with you. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about yourself. Well, I've been uh, around horses most of my life. Oh, right. I love them. I've done whatever I can do with a horse I, I like doing. I love kids and um, have been working with kids and horses a good part of my life. Okay. Miss mm -hmm. Frederick, same question. Um, I guess I started Hope Unbridled just um, because I saw a lot of hurting children, a lot of hurting youth in the area. and. Um, kids have a hard time dealing with their feelings and emotions, but the horses really help to take the focus off the kids. And um, so we hope Unbridled was started because of that. And, oh, right. uh, where, did, where did the name come from? Is there a sp specific reason you came up with that name? or? Um, I guess I just feel like, well, because we're working with horses yes. and horses are generally bridled. And when you bridle something, you, you hold it back. Mm. And hope is something that you don't want to hold back. You want released. Um, and so I, I feel like hope is probably the number one thing that kids need. Yes. They need to feel that hope. And when they lost hope, they've lost everything. That's and true. So hope unbridled, released, and into these kids' lives is a wonderful thing. So I love that. And um, it's also true that unbridled, most of the time the horses are actually unbridled. The mm, horses are free to come and go and do whatever they want. That's so awesome. it kind of a metaphor there that... <laughs> mm. and, and being a certified horse speci specialist, mm -hmm. tell us what does EGALA mean? EGALA is Equine Assisted Growth and Learning Association and it's a, a group that has set up a certain type of horse therapy or certain kind of set standards, standards and ethics mm -hmm. and they kind of oversee the training and make sure that people who say they're doing this are actually qualified Good. to do the work. Mm -hmm. um, what, uh, what types of services do you guys offer at the, uh, the place you do mm -hmm. the we equine do, therapy? We do equine assisted or horse assisted um, counseling, um, learning activities. Um, we do leadership building, um, team building, team communications, building. Yeah. and any type of like counseling. Okay. How can someone learn communication through a horse? <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, a lot of people ask us, you know, why horses? You know, mm -hmm. I can go to a counselor and sit in an office um, and improve my communication skills and so on, but. Horses are very, they live in the moment, in here, right here, right now. And the horses, we give the kids an activity and they work on that activity. And in counseling, in the office counseling, the focus is on the client. And they feel bad because everybody's focusing on me and my problems and things. But when they're with the horse, the focus is on the horse and only later they go home and relate their experience with the horse to mm. what's going on in their lives. Like, for example, if a client approaches a horse and the horse walks away, well, that brings up all kinds of feelings of rejection. Wow, mm. the horse doesn't like mm. me. And, and they feel really sad. And, and yet they have to learn to approach differently to Ooh. get the response that they want. And so that is, isn't that what communication is about? Approaching someone in order to get the results that we want in life. And so horses teach communication, verbal communication and nonverbal communication. Yes, they I, do. I think that's it in a nutshell that well, horses, people are, are used to communicating with each other and they tend to talk more than listen. Mm -hmm. And with, if you treat a horse just the way you treat people, um, you have to stop and, and pay attention to the horse. I mean, you have to kind of meet him in the middle to understand horse language and understand what he's saying to you. And I think that helps people realize that they need to meet people in the middle. Mm -hmm. And they need to listen to what people are saying. Because if they don't listen to the horse, 
and they don't work with the horse and communicate with it and find a way to communicate with it, they're not going to be able to get the task, accomplish yeah. the mm -hmm. task yeah, mm -hmm. or get the activity done. And I think it brings another dimension to it because uh, a lot of communication is nonverbal, mm -hmm. and you have to pick up on the nonverbal right. cues from the horse. So I think it's all encompassing. A it a is great thing. very it all is. encompassing. Yeah. What um, What are people saying that come to Hope and Bridal after they leave? I think most people are <laughs> thrilled. Most people yeah. are excited. Mm -hmm. They have a really good time. I don't think anybody has not enjoyed the experience. Mm -hmm. um, when we ran the we ran a uh, dropout prevention program at a school in Temple, um, the Priority Charter Schools, and that was called Lasso, Leading Adolescents to Successful School Outcomes. Wow. And we, it was a five-week program, and at the end, we just had students write their comments. You know, what was your favorite activity? Why would you recommend this to a friend? And so on. And what did you learn? And you know, all of them uh -huh. learned. You know over and over and over that I learned how to work with other people. I learned how to not get frustrated so mm. easily. I learned how to change my behavior in order to accomplish things mm. and just um, amazing. Yeah. It was all very, very positive and you could mm -hmm. you could see and you could feel the difference in the kids and the people that, you know, they as they got into it and they got used to it, they, they really uh, enjoyed it and mm -hmm. you could just tell by their body language and their uh, words and freedom with the horses that they were growing. How, how are you guys funded in what you do with the horses? Yeah, well we, um, obviously it's a, there are expenses and costs involved in offering the services. Um, we try to offer scholarships to those who cannot afford to get the services for themselves. Um, we try to run some things at full cost in order to fund the scholarships and things. We also have um, private donations from individuals. Mm. A lot of people have gone through United Way and designated Hope Unbridled as one of their, um, where they'd like their funding to go. We're also writing some grant proposals and submitting those around the area. Because um, it is, you know, if you go to counseling, you can expect to pay at least $85 an hour for regular in-office counseling, and our, you know, we've got two professionals, <laughs> you know, the mental horse. health professional and the equine professional or horse mm. professional, and we've got horses, and we will transport the horses to schools or to the different locations. Side or whatever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we have quite a few costs, um, so it's a little more expensive than traditional counseling. If someone watching today and they've just feeling the need to reach out and to help you guys. First of all, how can they get a hold of you and what are, so, what are some things you guys need from the community if they were to get involved? And get a hold of us through our website, okay. um, www.hopeunbridled.org um, or email me, kef at hopeunbridled.org. Or call. Or call. Mm -hmm. our, uh, five one two nine three one hope, um, okay. and we can um, help. I mean, we would just be so so grateful because we're starting to. We want to start a program of lasso in the fall here in September, and we don't have enough funding to offer scholarships yet. And okay. we would really like. I mean, the kids who need the help the most are the ones that can't afford yeah. to attend. Mm -hmm. So um, we really want to minister to those. But um, insurance, liability insurance, and all yeah. these costs yeah, yeah, add up. Everything, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. But we would accept. We would love to have donations of any kind, mm -hmm. and we'd love to have help, volunteers. Yeah. Um, there's always work to be done at the barn. There's paperwork, administrative work, publicity work. Um, we welcome Great anybody word. that would love to work with horses and kids, and to come help in yeah. any way they want to, we <laughs> would be grateful. Yeah. <laughs> and we are a registered 501c3, so all donations are tax deductible. Okay. What, uh, and both of you can share this question for both of you. Mm -hmm. What's a success story that you have seen from a child who came and just, I don't want to be here, then leaving like, oh my goodness, that's the best thing I've ever done? 
There have been several kids <laughs> that, um, yeah. in many, many instances, um, and there's not like one specific thing, it's kind of the culmination of kids mm. that were terrified to even touch the horse, or kids that were very, very quiet and reserved and withdrawn, and by the end of the five-week lasso session, they were just one of the kids, you know, a normal mm -hmm. kid. They were talking, they were laughing, they were working with each other, and they were part of a group and part of normal kids as opposed to being kind of an outsider and an outcast and very, very quiet and shy. Mm -hmm. Ms. Frederick, in less than a minute, tell me, which, what's your success story? I guess when I was going back into the school on, before the last session and I was putting, I wanted teacher feedback too. Did any of the teachers uh, notice any differences mm -hmm. in the students? And so I was putting all the questionnaires in the teacher's boxes and a teacher came into the mail room and, and I told her what I was doing and she said, oh, you're the lady that runs Lasso. <laughs> Let me tell you, this student, and she named the student, is in my class, and I have seen such a difference in this student. Wow. And um, yeah. thank you, God. I, I'm just, yeah. um, it's, it's nothing that Ann and I do. It, it's God and the horses and the nature, and um, it's just a wonderful just happens. combination. Yeah, that's yeah. what makes it so cool. Well, and, and from experience, I've been out, and uh, you was talking about the kids earlier being a little scared. Mm -hmm. I was kind of scared, too, to, <laughs> you know, to mess with the horses, but it's just a, it's just a neat experience, and yeah. I just encourage people who are watching to go out and just visit mm -hmm. and to see, mm -hmm. you know, to talk with y'all and see some of the things you do with the horses, because I think it's neat, especially working with the horses I think it's pretty neat. Mm -hmm. Yeah it yeah. is it's special. It is and amazing how even <clears throat> kids that are you know in trouble at school and don't respect authority you put them out there in the arena with the horses and they respect the horse. Whoa. So this is a way to reach the kids that principal can't get on them, the counselor yes. can't get them to open up but they, they respect the horse. Wow. I know our time went pretty fast, but sure I want to take this time to say thank you, Ms. Hartfield. Thank you, Ms. Frederick, for being on the show, and thank you for what you do. Well, thank, thank you for you. having us. We're glad to tell to people here. about Hope Unbridled. All right. And thank you, our viewers, for tuning in to Attention Central Texas.